There are some practicalities which are true of many e-bikes, and a lot of the time the focus is more on the motor rather than on the rider. And then such things as heavyweight bikes, motors that do not decouple, which means that if you're out on a ride and you run out of juice, the pedal home is like riding through sludge. Not a pleasant experience. Which is why Lapierre and Fazua have brought us here to the south of France to ride the all new E-Zesty. Long range, lightweight, and a very different approach to e-mountain biking. It could be said that e-bikers often worry way too much, fretting about what's in the tank when really they should be sweating it out on the trail. In many ways, range has become more important than ride. And it's that desire for bigger, faster, longer, that's never more than a button strike away, that's led to this underlying anxiety. But hey, whilst e-bikers might well have their own anxieties, non-e-bikers have got their own pushing and carrying woes of their own. But what about if you had an e-bike that had close to the same range, but far less weight? Hey Steve, oh. why wouldn't you use one of these? Oh, wow, now I'm mountain biking not mountain hiking. Woo! Well, okay, there's a little less power, but this bike is challenging the idea that a ride could only really be completed with enough juice in the tank, enough watts in the box. But then this bike really is two bikes. The 250 watt hour battery and drive can be removed. And with the blanking plate fitted, the bike transformed to a standard mountain bike. But with the battery only weighing in at just over a kilo, the range possibilities with a couple of spares is mind blowing. Lapierre have always been at the forefront of e-mountain bike developments. They brought us challenging new e-bike specific geometry, such as long chain stays for better climbing. They brought snake tube technology, which had a huge impact on the bike silhouette and addition of cells. And then Nico Vulio is a 10 time world mountain bike champion, an ambassador of e-bikes like no other. Today, they have arguably one of the broadest range of e-mountain bikes on the market. This then is the modern day Zesty, the E-Zesty. Lapier make elegant bikes, right? Yeah, of course they do, they're French. The Zesty is a bike that has huge history. Nico winning Val Dallos Enduro World Series on a Zesty. What was that a spicy? Only half a dozen years ago. An Enduro World Series that was run on a chairlift service, by the way. Ha, <laughs> chairlift, so 1930s. Now, one of the cool features of the Fazua system is that when you get to 25 kilometers an hour, it decouples mechanically, which means if you're on a ride and you run out of battery, you can ride home like a normal mountain bike and it doesn't feel like sludge. I'm now doing about 35, 40 Ks. And it feels light, it feels just easy to ride. See you later. Right, let's get into the heart of this bike and that's the Fazua Evasion Motor, which is located there in the down tube. It's compact, it's lightweight and it's discreet. And I'm hoping that out on the trail, it'll translate to a natural and dynamic ride. Now in the Evasion system, the Bavarians have created a motor, battery and electronics in one drive pack at 3.3 kilos. Yeah, that's 3.3 kilos. That's two brains, one small house cat, a house brick, a chihuahua, or 10 times heavier than a hamster. And it's all controlled via this handlebar mounted display, which gives you breeze, river and rocket. And the Fazua motor helps you onwards with up to 400 watts of assistance. I'm already thinking this bike is of massive importance, particularly in an e-mountain bike market, which has not been around that long. There are a lot of heavy and very powerful e-bikes on the market. And for those people who are wanting to make the switch, it's a huge, huge step, especially from those who've come from a long history of mountain biking. And this bike, the E-Zesty, really has mixed it up in that respect. A lightweight, low impact mountain bike that can metamorphose into just that, a mountain bike. Michael Baumgartner, head of testing at Fadzua in uh, Munich in Germany. Uh, Michael, three parts to the system, bottom bracket, battery and drive unit. Uh, 1.3 kilos, right? Yes. 60 newton meters of torque. Uh, what does this part do? Uh, the basic task it has to do is to transmit the power coming from the drive pack to your chain. OK. 
and we have all the sensors inside. There's a two-sided torque measurement and a cadence sensor. So the bottom bracket knows what the rider is doing. It is so simple. Yes. Uh, now we've been riding the Ease SD. Is that surely that is the ultimate application for this system, right? Yes, that's exactly what we had in mind when we developed this drive system. We wanted light, full suspension bikes to go everywhere you want. Yeah. Uh, pass me that battery there for a minute. Now, this battery weighs in at... 1.4 kilograms. I mean, it's not really much more than a water bottle, right? That's basically the idea. Having a second one in your backpack is yeah. super handy. So rem remember that this battery uh, takes you for a range in in the most powerful mode between 800 to 1,000 meters. Yeah, 2, 000, yeah. So can you imagine you got two of those, got one in your backpack. I guess you're going to be the limit and not the system. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. There's the three uh, um, yeah. units that are part of the system. Uh, now my question now is actually, how much faster is the bike with the motor in versus the motor out? Right, first run, I'm gonna be running the Fazua Evasion motor in the bike, riding in rocket mode. Okay, Simon, you ready? Three, two, one, go! So I'm running a 30 tooth chain ring up front, and I'm in the easiest gear on the eagle on the back. It is actually steeper than it looks. Stop! 14.86. 14.86. Okay, that's pretty good that was. Right, let's take the Fazua motor out, stick the blanking plate in, and go back to the old days. Okay, run two, it's time to go back to the old days. I put the blanking plate into the down tube, which replaces the Fazua motor. Uh, it's a bit weird, I've got nothing to refer to on the handlebar. So yeah, a bit of a blast from the past this. So again, same gearing. Simon, you ready? Three, two, one, go! Oh boy, it's not too bad actually. Wow, I'm gonna stand up. Obviously different technique when climbing with that motor. She's going pretty well, actually. Ooh, <laughs> that's kicking. Stop. 17, okay, so there's three seconds over a 15 to 20 second climb. So you can imagine if you're going from here up to there, it would be a big difference. Now it's not only about the climbing. After all, why have 150 mil travel just to go uphill? The bike then comes in two models. You've got the AM Limited Ultimate and also the AM9 Ultimate. Comes in three sizes, medium, large, and extra large. And let's have a look at the geometry because as you'll find, this bike really is all action. And the angles really are important because such has been the obsession with motors and batteries that very often the fine detail of handling has been forgotten. With a 65.5 head angle and 75 degree C-tube angle, 435 millimeter chainstays, 15 millimeter drop on the bottom bracket, this bike is built for riding. And reach, a good indicator of sizing, is absolutely bang on the money. Large has a 470 millimeter reach, which for me at six foot is the exact size I need. And plenty of room here for riders taller or smaller either side. And you know, riding out here in the rocks of the south of France really has got me thinking about this bike. It really is quite pioneering. It fits in that gap between e-bikes and mountain bikes, that gap between bikes that are dominated by the motor to a sport which is dominated by the rider. And I think this is the main thing. You can still have the same kind of range on this bike as you can on a heavy e-bike with lots of power and a big battery. So it's a, it's a juggle between a lightweight bike, which has got less power, or a heavyweight bike, which has got more power, and arguably about the same amount of range. Some, of course, would argue that mountain bikers should not really have the shackles of relying on batteries, not all of the time anyway. After all, this is about fun, about getting away from the stresses of life. We don't want an underlying apprehension of whether you'll make it to the finish. We want to escape. I mean, look at this bike. It's lighter, neater, and smaller than ever before. The thing with e-mountain bikes, for many people, they simply are a step too far. A lot of time, it's more about the motor. For others, it's simply a case of they don't live in vertically challenging terrain. Whatever way you look at it, the e -Zesty, it's innovative, it's pioneering. It's part of, rather than apart from, nature. 
And that's it from the hills in the south of France. If you want to see some more tech e-bike content, check out the video I did from the Eurobike show last year. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video and uh, click on the globe so we can bring you some more e-bike specific content. Cheers.